Hello, and welcome to Health and Fitness Redefined. I'm your host, Anthony Amen. Join me today as we take a dive into the world of health and fitness, where we learn how to overcome adversity, depict facts versus fiction, and see health and fitness in a whole new light. Today, we have a special guest on Mason Gravely. Mason, for those that don't know, actually is from Athletic Brewing and has two shows of his own. So you want to talk about somebody that knows the podcasting world, knows the health world. This is your guy right here. Mason, welcome to the show, man. Super excited to have you. Hey, Anthony. Thanks, man. It's, it's, that's a heck of an intro. I don't know if I deserve all that, but no, it's, I'm happy to be here. Happy to have you. I mean, I feel like we were talking pre-show and that I feel like I've known you forever at this point. I've mean, just been buds and you're just killing it. And I really appreciate you taking the time out to come on. But I know about you, but I want my audience to know about you. So why don't you take a couple minutes and just explain your story, how you got into the podcasting world, how you hooked up with Athletic Brewing. I know you're a crazy adventure person, and I want to hear all about it. Go for it. Cool. And uh, the sun came out and shining off this table right in my eyes, so my face is like glowed up. So hopefully that changes soon. But uh, yeah, man, I'm uh, I host two podcasts, like you said. Um, work for Athletic Brewing here. We make non-alcoholic craft beer, and which might sound crazy, but it's non-alcoholic beer is here. And uh, people are loving it, especially in your world where they're um, turning their life in a healthy direction. A lot of times the last thing people change is their um, drinking habits. If they like to still drink, a lot of people might cut that out first. And then they're like, you know, I have to cut alcohol out. Uh, for whatever for a period of time or forever and I can't I can't ever enjoy a beer again and then other people are like you know I just I like beer I'm going to keep that or I like to drink I'm going to keep that but I'm going to change my diet change my exercise and we're kind of like a cheat code for people it's like hey you can have a beer on a Tuesday night or or sorry my dogs are barking hurt stop um you know, you can have a beer on a Tuesday night, on a, on a Wednesday night, anytime you want in, a, on, in the morning if you want. And it doesn't affect your sleep, doesn't affect your fitness or any progress you're making. And if you don't drink at all anymore, it's a great way to kind of get those flavors that the craft beer industry is, is always working on and so well known for, uh, but without any of the, uh, any of the effects. So that's cool. But, so quick uh, question. What's yeah. your favorite one? Man, I'll tell you what, the tried and true run wild. It's our IPA. It's the blue can. Um, it's always available on our website. I love that beer. It's so refreshing. Uh, it looks great in the glass. I, I, it's nine o'clock in the morning or I would be drinking one <laughs> or 10 o'clock now. Um, but it's, uh, that's my favorite one. It's like what, 70 calories, just a great hoppy beer and uh, it's so refreshing after doing, you know, working in the yard or working on a house like you and I are both doing right now. And just like, I've got to, I've got to use a chop saw all night or for something or, or, or like put, put something in with some tools. And I'm like, I don't want to be tipsy doing that stuff, but I can have a bunch of athletics and be fine. So that's my favorite. I, by far. <laughs> yeah, totally. That, that's that's my the favorite. one that got me hooked right there. And it's always available. We make a lot of them that are like, you know, limited time offers or, or, or small batch or they're just seasonal. And it's cool. It's great to have. I love those. But it's like, I'm glad my favorite one is the one that's always available too. I'd be, I'd be upset if it was, I just loved one that I couldn't get all the time. I, I absolutely love it. But I want to hear a little bit about your personal s- story. So we're the same age. I mean, I feel like in my life, I've experienced a crazy ton, and I'm sure you have as well. I know you said you bounced from Colorado to Florida. You host an adventure sports podcast, which is amazing. How did you get into that kind of world? Just tell us a little bit about that. Okay. No, that, that's a good question. Um, so let's see. The, the adventure sports podcast, we interview people doing just crazy things in the outdoors, whether that's you know, rafting the Grand Canyon, climbing Mount Everest, um, walking across 
America, around the world. I just interviewed someone the other day that she has a fleet of camels, like five camels that she's walking clear across Australia with. And they were what? wild. Yeah, they were wild camels. <laughs> that she, it, I didn't realize this, but Australia has a million, upwards of a million wild camels just like roaming out in the forest or out in the desert. And she tamed five of them. She was a news reporter, quit that job and everything, really got into camels and is walking them literally the length of what would be a coast to coast in America, like LA to New York. And I, I can just interview people doing crazy stuff like that. So what happened was I, I, I was on that show. Let me back up all the way. One second, I gotta grab something. Let me show you something. This bike, you see that bike right here? Yeah. You can barely see it. I got it. Actually, I got it locked up. But that bike is the bike that uh, a couple years ago, no, about about like I don't know, 2011 or so. I was 20. I took that bike that's sitting right there and uh, living in Florida. I flew one way to Fairbanks, Alaska, and uh, rode it all the way back home to Central Florida. You and, went uh, <laughs> from Alaska <laughs> to Central Florida yeah, on, on that little road bike right there, and it's what? Like, it's, I've actually got it locked to my chain, uh, my one of my saws inside the shed, or I'd pull it out. But uh, that's the bike. I keep it handy. I ride it all the time, and so flew one way, <laughs> one way to Fairbanks in college. I had the summer. I had like two and a half months to get this done, and my best friend and I, who lives really close to here now. Um, we said, like, let's just get bikes, let's fly, let's ride them back. And we raised money for to build an orphanage for this trip, just kind of raise awareness, do something crazy and draw some attention. And, and we built a website and uh, just had like a, a, a fundraising page. And we raised a bunch of money and then we went and built this orphanage in, over in Africa. It was really cool, man. So did that trip and started, just fell in love with adventure, fell in love with doing crazy things like that did something every summer for the next like six years eventually got you know on a couple podcasts as you do you get interviewed um got on this show called the adventure, adventure sports podcast really just enjoyed the host got to know there was two hosts and just became friends with them uh a couple years later they were interested in getting rid of the show and they they were talking to me about it and i said i'd love to host it so they sold the show to me all this is the backstory and then and then bill the founder of athletic brewing the founder and you talked to the co-founder john yeah um, they found it together but bill's the one that approached john so uh bill is just a big fan of the podcast he was a big fan of adventure sports podcast he was driving all over the northeast talking to investors trying to get the beer out and he'd listened to a lot of podcasts mine was one of them and he just reached out one day and said hey you know i love the show i'd love to send you some beer and uh, see what you think. And I'm like, man, this stuff is great. Can't believe it's non-alcoholic. They uh, they wanted to, you know, we just worked out a deal where they sponsored the show for a couple months. And uh, and at the end of that, we just, Bill and I became friends. And he's like, hey, got this crazy idea. Do you want to do a podcast for Athletic Brewing and then run our ambassador program and then help out with a bunch of other things? And I had just sold uh, my back, this backpacking company and uh, where we were doing guided trips all around the country. That was really fun, but it was also very hard to start. Good thing I did because 2020 happened. I sold it in 2019. So that was perfect timing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I got with Athletic Brewing uh, through the podcast and how I got to the podcast through adventures. So that's, that's kind of the backstory. That's mind boggling, man. <laughs> I want to go back to just first, I can't fathom right now taking a bicycle from Alaska to Florida. So highlights of that trip, talk, what went through your mind when let's say you just got, like you go from Alaska, you have to go through Canada, you get back to the States and you're like, shit, I have the rest of the United States to get through right now. Yeah, we came into the United States in Montana and if you know anything about where Montana is in relation to like central Florida, it's still a long way. And we were only halfway there. So Canada was half the trip, man. Canada is huge. People don't realize just how big Canada is. So man, 
me and my buddy, we, we just, we, we went to college together. We were college buddies. We both played on the basketball team. So we were just like these dudes that played basketball. We were gym rats, always in the gym. Um, didn't, you know, it, it, it's, it's like a, Florida is like, a, it's cool, it's warm, and, and it's got a lot of outdoor things to do, but it's a lot of inside culture with sports, and unless you're on the football field all the time, but we had only been camping a few times. I had, I had been kind of camping a little bit with my dad growing up. We liked to fish a little bit, but it was like, this was not our world at all. We just, I had a big world map on my wall in my apartment, and he was my roommate. And we were just talking, we would always talk like, man, what do we do? Let's do something. We kept seeing stories about people hiking the Appalachian Trail that goes from Maine to Georgia, you know, that long hiking trail that, that sounds really, it's like six months to, to do the whole thing. Um, people, you know, rowing boats across the ocean. Like, I don't know, something about doing something crazy sounded appealing, but we didn't know anything. And one day after um, class, we were just sitting in our apartment together and I had this old world map on the wall. And I was like, Paul, what can we do? He's like, you know, I, I'm graduating this year. I still had a couple years left, but Paul was graduating. He's like, hey man, you know, summer's coming up. I'm graduating. I don't know what I want to do. And I was like, you know, I, I, I would love to do something with you, but we'd have to do it in a summer. So the Appalachian Trail was too long for what we think we could do it in. So he got the idea. He's like, how far can we bike? And we don't, we don't have bicycles at this point. Like we don't, we're not cyclists. We don't know anything. <laughs> we just, we just play basketball. <laughs> and, uh, and he was like, let's fly as far as we can from home and bike back to my house. And uh, I said, okay, let's do it. How far is far, far as we can go. And he's like, how about Alaska? That feels far enough. Technically you could go a little farther because you can, you can technically bike from South America up through Central America all the way around. But we didn't want to cross too many borders and we had to do it in a summer because his girlfriend, who's now his wife, was graduating at the end of the summer. So we had to get back for that too. And I was like, all right, what can we do in like three months and uh, or two and a half months? And uh, so we decided Fairbanks, Alaska, we were going to fly one way, get bikes and uh, bike back. And we, we thought we could do it in the amount of time and man we didn't know anything it was it was it, we we left in may school got out may 7th we flew out may 9th in, in may in florida it's 95 degrees and terribly humid we were like you know how cold can it be in alaska it can't be that cold in may and I'm dying right now <laughs> all, all we had all we had for warm weather was our basketball warm-ups the coach let us have to for the trip like we just had it you know they were like hey take this you'll need them it was just like sweatpants and a hoodie. And that was it. But, and, uh, dude, the first month, it snowed almost every day. So, you know, if you don't know, in the mountains out west, it'll snow every month of the year at high elevation. And on the roads and just in town, it can snow and easily snow in May and June. My son was born in Colorado in, in early May. It snowed for like a week after he was born. It was crazy. And... We were so ill-prepared. We, we were approached by a moose, by grizzly bears, by crazy logging trucks, like everything, like just, it was, road got washed out from storms. And it was, it was crazy. And our parents didn't want us to do it. And uh, looking back, they had plenty of reason. Cause we, we I, I hang out with my, that, that friend, Paul, that I see him every week. We're going to hang out tomorrow. We always still do stuff. And we're always talking about this crazy trip that we did. And that wasn't the only one. You know, we got home from that. I ended up biking across the country every summer for the next five years. So did six total cross America bike trips. So you didn't and, give uh, up. You just hopped right back on. Loved it. I still loved, loved it. it. Yeah. And, and then actually you got to turn that passion into work this summer. Athletic Brewing, if you don't know, we biked from our Connecticut brewery all the way to our San Diego brewery this past summer. Wow, I didn't know that. And so they, I was the one that kind of headed, you know, helped head that up and helped out a lot because I had all this experience. But that was my seventh cross country bike trip. I didn't bike that trip. It was, I did the kind of, I helped with support and planning, but we let teammates like folks working, the folks that work for us in New York, the folks that work in Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, um, Illinois, 
Colorado. Everybody chipped in and did like 300 miles. And we carried this tap handle, this one tap handle all the way across the country. And me and Nick at Athletic drove the support vehicle and kept everybody safe. And that was, it was really cool to turn that passion into, a, you know, get paid to do it. It was awesome. So, and we, able, we were able to kind of like do the grand open of our San Diego brewery right on the West Coast. So that was, that was back in August. Um, but anyway, to go back to Alaska, man, <laughs> it was, it was so crazy. We, we looking back, it was really dangerous, but in all reality, it, it, it's the only dangerous part about it was, was vehicles. Um, but you know, plenty of people travel by bike. It's called bike touring or bike packing, like backpacking just on a bike. It's all the same equipment. You got a tent, sleeping bag little camp stove if you want you've got you know some food and um you know headlamp it's all the same gear it's just on a bicycle and there's a couple little specific things but that's that's all it is and, and, and what's cool about it you can travel 100 miles a day pretty easily um not easily but it's like that's a good day of work is 100 miles with a fully loaded bike and we didn't know anything so i'll tell you a quick funny story we we fly uh we start and we're all in high spirits. It's, it's kind of raining. You know, it's not a great day, but we start. And I'm singing songs. I'm listening to an iPod. This was back in 2011. So it was almost 10 years. It's going to be 10 years this year, which is crazy to think about. Oh, my gosh. But I was 20 going on 21. And uh, we, uh, we get going. And when, once you, if you know anything about Fairbanks, it's not a big town. It's like 50,000. And once you leave, there ain't nothing for like 100 miles, it feels like. There's little communities but it, it's a lot of open space yeah we really get like is. 10 miles out of town there's a little there's a, not a little there's a huge air force base and jets are flying in and out it's incredibly loud some moose ran across the road in front of us the road is super wet the, the, the rain turns to snow and the wet road turns to ice it's awful day one sucked and then <laughs> within an hour of leaving the trip i get a flat tire and oh my god we're like we're like oh shit I'm like what are we gonna do <laughs> and, uh, and we i jump off the bike and i look at it and i'm like paul did you do you know how to change a flat tire and he's like i never looked up how to do that and i'm like <laughs> i didn't either and i said what are we gonna do and we just we didn't have service we couldn't look it up this was before iPhones like this was this no it wasn't before, I'm sorry we were just pro college students so we didn't have iPhones <laughs> iPhones are out we were just we were really honestly just poor college students we had a thousand dollars to do this whole trip together and it, it cost us 600 bucks the whole thing it was crazy and uh, we lived on you know five bucks a day eating ramen noodles peanut butter and jelly sandwiches snickers like we whatever we didn't pay for hotel like we camped every night unless someone took us in or someone got us a hotel and um we were just we had no idea what we were doing and, and, and with the flat tire that was pretty evident so i was like we flew to alaska to ride bikes back and we don't even know how to change a flat tire so we take everything off the bike we flip it upside down we just start figuring it out so we, we knew we needed a tube we put it in we figured it out. It took us like an hour and we were like, all right, you know, we, we got a little, we had a little pump and we pumped it back up and we were like, okay, we did it. And so we get back on the bike, man, 10 minutes later, the tires flat again. And I'm like, is this what every day is going to be like? Cause this sucks. <laughs> well, little did we know you, that when you, you get a flat tire, something causes the flat, you know, there's a yeah, piece of, of glass or a piece of metal. And so you got to run like a, your hand or like a cloth on the inside of the tire to check if it, because a lot of times it does pop out. So you don't have to do that. But most of the time it's stuck in the tire and it'll pop the new tube. So we just had to, we put that into together in our mind, like, okay, it's probably stuck in the tire because you can't see it from the outside. You might not be able to see it. So we, we did that, found a little piece of metal, fixed it again and kept going. And we didn't have another flat tire for 40 days. So it was, it, it, you know, it was just hit or miss what if something was just to go wrong or not. And then the next time we had a flat tire, we had five that day, five, you know, totally unique instances where we had flat tires. So it's, it was crazy, man. So 
Um, I could talk for hours about that, but I want to go. Just, yeah, I want to talk about what you away. want to talk about. <laughs> I couldn't even fathom biking that long. I, I have a mountain bike, so I hit trails that go 18, 20 miles, and then I'm dead. Yet alone going from Alaska all the way down to Florida. That's insane. I mean, let's let's kind of bring this back a little bit. I know with the podcast, you get to meet all, all these people that do things like that, which are incredible. What, how does somebody like ordinary Joe Schmo, how do you convince them that this is something they need to do? Or is this something that's just innate in someone's mind where it's certain people want to do it or others are just like, no, or is it something that comes along? Is there a way to help get people to do more adventurous stuff or live more adventurous life? Or is it just for certain people? And that's that. That's a good question. Um, I will say I, w I was really into those things. And so, you know, the next trip was a bike trip from my house up the East coast to Maine, like all, you know, the, the Canadian border just about like, so that was like a totally different trip. The next one was coast to coast. Another one was all off road across the country just totally all trails doing 120 miles a day so that was the most difficult one and on a mountain bike with all your gear on it, it, it that, that mountain bike I, is my still my daily rider because there's a lot of some trails around here but i'd show you that one if i could and you know so it, it it's once you get started it's just like anything else just like getting people in shape with with personal training and with your gym that people are hesitant or people, you know, it's hard at first and they know they need to change or they want to do something. I, I'll be honest, when I'm not on a trip, I'm not, I'm kind of a, just a boring, normal person, you know, I'm, I'm normal. And I think I'm kind of boring because like I just work and I don't want to go do stuff and kind of in my flip flops all day. So it, it's, I feel like just not that adventurous when I'm not actually on the trip. So I think it's it's something that starts with a desire to want to do something and a lot of people have a desire to do do something whether that's get in shape or you know get a better job or a better situation for their family or or achieve something more and I think a lot of people want to achieve something um strenuous and something difficult physically a lot most people want to achieve something big whether that's run a hundred miles or complete an iron man or you know you know a crossfit competition like it's all different for everybody but you just got to start with what you want to do and really it is man I, I tell you what i've learned from all these guests they all say the same thing when you ask them how to get started in doing this and they're like just start small like it just that's really what happens you 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 start by um you don't bike across the country in a day uh, did, I didn't do any training for this and I had the yeah. time I was in college. I have that ability, but I, I couldn't do that now just with the way life set up. I had a son and a wife and a house and all that, but I can still do really interesting, cool adventures um, on the weekends or from, you know, if I work from nine to five, there's that five to nine time, but you can really do some cool things. I try every week or two, probably two weeks to go camp somewhere. I bike somewhere in the woods and camp for the night, come back in the morning early before work and that's just a way to start getting the brain to work in a new way see new perspective and so to, to, to answer your question um to get people started in this just start small start researching and uh, just start trying things it, it really is it really comes down to that you might not ever want to hike the whole appalachian trail or ever think you have time to but if you just start pursuing something you want to do you never know how your life might might end up so many people we've had on our show just loved doing something never thought their life would allow them to have a three-month adventure or a six-month adventure or to travel full-time but then all of a sudden they get fired or all of a sudden someone passes away or or they run into a you know a really amazing situation and it allows them that time or that ability or they just you know, decide they want to do that. And it's a 10 year process to lead to paying off their house or selling it or getting the kids to college or taking the kids with them on an adventure. So 
I think you can achieve whatever you want. You just got to, you know, start planning your life around what you want to do. Is it the fear that holds most people back? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I speak for myself, it is fear. You know, I, I get overwhelmed sometimes and I feel it feels like a totally different person that did all those trips, you know, five, 10 years ago. And I'll, I'll lay in bed and watch YouTube and try not to think about anything. Um, and then I realize, you know, like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of avoiding pursuing what I want to pursue. And so fear does keep people back and there are legitimate fears, but what we keep hearing too from, from people on adventure sports podcast is the worst case scenarios really never happen. And for those of the people that, that it does happen, it's not as bad as they made it up in their mind. I had one couple the other day, family of four that lives in a RV in Europe full time. They just travel wow. around Europe. It's really cool. And they were, you know, just normal family in Boston a few years ago, they sold their house, moved into an RV and, made the commitment to travel to every country in Europe for like two years. And then once that was done to do something else. And so we talked about that and they said their RV was broken into while they were visiting some museum and uh, everything out of it was stolen. And they were like, it was like our cameras, their laptops, all their valuables just totally stolen. And that was, they were like, it was awful. And I'm like, what did you do? And they said, well, we, we had insurance on our valuables, like travel insurance or whatever. And she goes, you know, everything was replaced, but we had about two weeks where we didn't have any electronics or our phones and stuff. But we went out and got a couple new laptops to communicate and um, just some temporary stuff. And I was like, so the worst case scenario of what could happen still was only like a two week delay and you didn't have to pay out of pocket for anything. And you lost a lot of stuff. But a lot of it was stored on the cloud, you know, a lot of their pictures and, and uh, videos and all that. And even that awful, awful situation wasn't uh, unsolvable, if that makes sense. They could solve it and they kept going on their trip. And it was like, it literally didn't cost them anything. So it was kind of like, yeah, it could have been worse in other ways. But those kinds of things are not going to happen that often. And even when they do, there's always a solution. So. I've, I've learned that. So if it's fear that's keeping you from starting or, or trying something, um, I think you got to check yourself. Is it rational? I'm scared to death of the ocean. But I live right next to it now. Same. And I take my <laughs> kayak in it all, all the time. And me and a friend kayaked across a bay the other day um, or, or a couple of weeks ago across this big bay that was really deep water. And I, I was really scared. And, uh, is it the sharks or is it the rip current? Because it's both. It's everything. It's the ocean, <laughs> man. It's it's it's. There's a like I have a, just a fear of deep bodies of water. You can't see the bottom and like big animals out there. It's just terrifying. Whereas like in a river with alligators, it doesn't bother me at all. Uh, you know, they, I don't want to be close to them necessarily, but it's like I know they're scared. Just they're not going to do anything. Um, but just the ocean is like, oh my gosh. So we paddled across this bay. It was in the middle of the night too. It was totally dark. What? and i'm about to have a freaking panic attack and my buddy doesn't care he's he's just fine <laughs> and i realized that if i'm if i have a fear of serious fear if i'm going with someone else to do something it's it's it helps so much um but i'm trying to start in the mornings kayak a little bit on my own out in some deeper water just because i want to face that fear and tell my remind myself and teach myself reteach myself that like it, it's it's not rational people do this all the time people people kayak across oceans without an issue and it nothing's you know, like i have a one in a million chance of something bad happening um so just go out there and enjoy it face that fear and just exposure therapy and so um we crossed that bay and i just kept looking at this light that was on the other side of the bay it must have been a street light or something that was like a mile away and i was like just keep looking and there were splashes of fish around me and it was kind of wavy because it was a little windy and got across and it was like okay that wasn't that wasn't awful we didn't sink and die out there um so that's that's you know you got to realize that and then i'll say this i know i'm going all over the place i'm terrible about this but a lot of my family and a lot of especially grandparents and people that loved me with good intentions really 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 tried to talk me out of some of those first few adventures 
And I'm just really glad I didn't listen to them. You know, uh, they, they, they had good intentions in saying like, you can't do this. You can't go bike 5,300 miles across the country, across the continent. And, uh, you're going to die out there or something. And really it was just their fears. They were putting on me, you know, it was their insecurities. My grandpa had a fear about leaving our hometown. He wouldn't ever leave city limits. And it was not a, it's not a big town, it's like 3000 people. And so I can't let him take his fear and put it on me. Cause if it was up to him, I'd hide under the covers all day long. You know what I mean? So if it was up to my mom, she I'd live with her and she'd be taking care of me full time. You know what I mean? It's like this, that, that, that instinct that uh, we have to fight. The love and that brings a lot of fear because they don't want anything happening to you because then it hurts them and it's a whole cycle. But so uh, what I'm getting out of it is it was worth it. Oh man, it was the greatest adventures of my life. And I, and I get it now. I got a son and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like having your heart walking around outside, just open to anything happening to it. Like just imagine all your feelings and your heart just walking around for anyone to run into and bully or hurt <laughs> and uh it's 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 terrifying but it's also like i've got to remind myself when he's old enough and wants to do something i have to say all right i, I have to be strong enough to say go out and chase it because i did and it was the greatest thing i ever did if, if, if you go out there and it doesn't go as well or something happens it's not something you, you got to be okay with that so um my parents did eventually come around and they're proud and whatnot and supportive. But uh, even now I'll tell my mom, I'm like, Hey mom, I'm going on a bike ride. She's like, you can't go out on that road. That's dangerous. And I'm like, mom, I'm like 30,000 miles around this country. Like it's not a big deal. <laughs> so it's just moms, you know, <laughs> they mean it out of love. That's what, that's what I've learned. It is out of love. I just want to hear before we uh, start wrapping this up. I know you have, you have hundreds of episodes out. So there's got to be one story that just sits in your mind from someone you had on your show. What was your absolute like, wow, I can't believe this person did this that you had a, on your show? That's interesting. That's a good question. And this is another thing for listeners. Um, it really is not about the the... the epicness of the adventure or how crazy what they did is my favorite episodes are really how the people tell the story and i think the most mundane normal life is an incredibly beautiful story if you know how to tell it you know what i'm saying like some of the, the, my favorite episodes are the people that don't have their accomplishments all over you know all over the internet and have been interviewed a million times and know what to say my favorite guests are the ones that are really just under the radar. You don't know much about them and they just, they just do their thing. And the longer you talk to them, the more you learn about them, the more you're kind of blown away by them. Um, an episode like that was, uh, let's see, it was one recent that was really cool. But m my favorite episode is actually uh, similar to mine, not because it's, 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 this, it's an Alaska style trip, but it was the guy's story. There was this, this guy that uh, was in college in Boulder, Colorado, and uh, just doing awful. He was an alcoholic and uh, I think he was using some drugs and just life was a wreck. He was just waking up on the street after on a Saturday morning, like what the heck happened? And his parents were like, you need to check in somewhere. Um, we're not going to keep sending you to college or help you out in any, anymore. And he was like, I got to do something. So he, he started using this, the program at the school that helped students and it helped him so much that he was like, this, this saved my life. I want to do something to help y'all. So he, he bought a moped <laughs> and rode it from Colorado, from Boulder to, uh, to Anchorage, Alaska. He did the other wow. way and he went and talked to schools and, um, you know, it's not the craziest thing anyone on the show. People have done some crazy stuff on the show, like climbing all the seven summits, the seven highest mountains on, on the planet, climbing. Uh, you know, we've had astronauts on the show that have been in space. You know, we've talked to people who have sailed around the world by themselves in a sailboat with no engine um, for a year and not see land, not see anyone else. And 
go from actually from like Boston Harbor all the way around the world and back and crazy wow, stories, insane. dude, so many crazy stories, but that story about the scooter taking, taking a moped to Alaska was my favorite because the way he told it and, uh, just the humility in his voice, the, the humor in the story itself, how ridiculous some situations were he ended up getting in. <laughs> I just laughed thinking about it because this guy was like, I'm 20, 20 years old and quit drinking and doing drugs and I'm riding a moped across America and Canada trying to talk to elementary schools into letting me come speak to their kids. I look like a homeless person. <laughs> and this guy was so self-aware of how ridiculous it was and uh i just loved the story and he, he, he's not like trying to make a career out of it. he just did this cool thing tells it well so for anyone out there you know you you, you can turn an incredible you can turn a, a trip that's overnight a weekend trip uh, uh, uh something you do ridiculous that's just out of the box you know that's one thing i love why, why i was so drawn to athletic brewing it's like taking this thing that you know and just flipping it right on its head non-alcoholic craft beer who the heck's gonna drink that and here we are growing like growing like a, a weed man it's crazy and and people don't realize just how amazing their lives can be if you just want to look at things a little differently and that's why we do push a lot of micro adventures stuff you can do just overnight stuff you can do on a weekend not even a long weekend and so you get people that say, you know, tonight, instead of sleep, I'm going to run 50 miles and see how I feel tomorrow. Or I'm going to go camp on that mountain near my house or take my kids camp in the backyard or do, do something out of the box. It, when you get home the next day, you just look at life totally different. And that's so beneficial for us. So you, you can have an incredible story worth telling um, by doing very small, small, incredible things. So... I got to tell you, Mason, it, you're making me start thinking right now. I'm like, what can I do? I need to do something like that with my life and get myself out there and go just do something crazy. <laughs> yeah. Just for the sake of doing it. Sometimes it's, it's like, like you, you know, I'm in a rut flipping this house. It's so exhausting. You could just the same stuff every day, you know, the same routine, everything's a mess. Got to work all day doing the podcast like it's great beautiful wonderful things but it can really bog you down and kind of close your mindset into just these tunnel vision of like all these little my little life and my stupid little house that i'm flipping it's like it's all about you and really i don't know it can drag you down sometimes and so i gotta like personally get out there and just do something different like my parents live like 70 miles from here I think I'm just going to bike to their house one day and then they can drive me back the next day just to do something like different. And some of the most incredible stories that we've had are just people doing stupid stuff. One of the, my other favorite stories was this guy. He commutes an hour and a half every day to, to college he was working at. Um, and he's like, I'm just so sick of this. And so one day he decided instead of driving, I'm going to walk. I'm just going to walk to, to, to school. And, and it was like, an hour and a half drive. So that's, you know, 70, 80 miles. And it took him, he, he started on like a Friday night after work, he drove home, had everything ready and walked and he did it barefoot just to add more craziness <laughs> to it. And it was not, it was just stupid, but it was also, he made this video about it and it was so inspiring. And when you slow down and see things that you're used to seeing in a plane or in a car, and you see it on foot, you see so much detail. You see, that's what I love about biking. You don't miss anything. There is so many interesting things all around you. If you do it on foot, if you go that route on foot or just, you know, I, there's a lot of dirt roads down here in the South. And I'm always like, what is down that road? Let's just go see, let's just go see. There's a pond down there with this dock you never knew about. And it's just, there's all kinds of little things like that to discover and, um, you know, sometimes going away from home and coming back really helps you see that because you, you're going and doing this at other people's where, where, where is home for them? When you come across people on these trips that you're in their little bubble, their little life, and you see things they don't even see. And then you can come home and say, well, what am I missing right in my backyard? So 
that's a really fun part of it. But anyway, I, I encourage you to do something. It don't have to be crazy. It don't have to be long, but. Um, I, I can tell you that my fiance and I are, we're trying to work out details, but for the honeymoon, most people go on cruises and beach. We want to hike Machu Picchu. Oh, that That's... would be awesome. <laughs> on the Inca Trail. Yeah, I, I've always dreamt about it, just going to South America, going to see those sites. And I'm like, what a better opportunity than a honeymoon where most people are like, let's go to Hawaii. <laughs> that would be awesome. That, that would be cool. That's what we did. Our honeymoon was camping and uh, camping and hiking um, in Utah. And so it was sleeping in the back of the truck. You know, we had a one person tent, um, but that's all you need. That's all the room you need when you're on your honeymoon, you know? So, uh, <laughs> but that's, uh, yeah, that would be a great idea. I, I encourage you to do something like that. It'd be fun. And to all my listeners, I want to hear you guys, if you have any crazy adventures i mean i'm sure mason would love to have you on a show because the stories are phenomenal subscribe to adventure sports podcast subscribe to without compromise podcast this guy mason you were a fabulous storyteller oh I th thank you thank you i know i can go on rabbit trails and tangents and drag it out but i appreciate it this is fun and thank you. And thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Health and Fitness Redefined. Don't forget, subscribe to our show and join us next week as we dive deeper into this ever-changing field. And remember, which is totally appropriate for this, fitness is a journey, not a destination. Thank you for joining us, Mason. It was a pleasure, man. Awesome. Anthony, thank you so much, man. Cool.